Hello students, in today's lecture, we will be discussing the very famous Davison Germer experiment, which has been specially uh, helping us to know about the matter waves. It is the first experimental evidence that the stream of material particles will be showing wave like property and during this experiment diffraction grating concepts have been used. Now let us understand the experimental setup of this experiment first. Here is my high tension battery. It is giving us a voltage supply. Here is a filament, tungsten filament, which when heated emits a stream of electrons. This electron gun gives a direction to the emitting electrons and makes it fall on a nickel target straight. From this target, now we have purposely taken a large nickel target because we are well aware that we are going to use the concept of crystal structure, the interplanar spacing and a well defined lattice pattern. So this target, nickel target will have these properties. Once it gets incident on the nickel target, it is diffracted towards an electron detector and basically this is a rotating Faraday cylinder. Rotating Faraday cylinder. So what it does is that it keeps rotating at this position and when electrons fall on it, immediately it detects these electrons and the galvanometer there which is used to detect the variation of charge in any electric circuit shows deflection and earthing has been taken as a precautionary measure. We are also having a circular scale here. Now the uh, uh, best point about this target is that we can rotate it at different azimuthal angles for different voltages and this will help us in taking more readings and now the electrons when scattered from the target are getting collected on the Faraday cylinder. So the crystal can be rotated about an axis perpendicular to the incident beam so that various values of azimuthal angle can be obtained. This whole setup is kept in a highly evacuated ap setup uh, apparatus and the low potential in the beginning is applied so that electrons start coming out from the filament. The moment they start coming, they drop on this target and then we can keep varying the angles for different potentials. Once we have done this, the observations will be repeated for electrons which have been accelerated through different potentials. And the current here will be a measure of the intensity of diffracted beam which is plotted against the diffracting angle. And now once we observe the plot at 40 volt, it is a simple curve. At 44 volt, we see a slight bend. At 48 volt, this bend has increased a bit. And at 54 volt or angle 50 degree, we observe a bump, B-U-M-P, in this curve. After that, again this starts declining and the graph takes its original form. Now this observation which we are noticing when voltage is 54 volt and azimuthal angle is 50 degree has gone in to prove that electrons can also be used or are like matter waves. How? Now what we will do is the uh, bump which is coming at 54 volt and 50 degree pro proving that the evidence that electrons have been diffracted by target and are verifying the existence of electron wave. We will find out the wavelength lambda 
through two methods first through the crystal structure formula that is 2d sin theta equal to n lambda and 1 through de Broglie formula lambda is equal to h upon p. We will note that both the values are same hence experiment is verified. So how do we calculate wavelength in this experiment? See this is our target with an interplanar spacing d which is known to us now point uh, 0 0.091 nanometer is the approximately the uh, interplanar spacing. This is the azimuthal angle phi here and this theta and theta. Now this is the incident beam, diffracted beam. We have drawn a normal. Theta plus phi plus theta is equal to 180 degree. So 2 theta is equal to 180 degree minus phi. Now this phi we will take this 50 degree and notice what happens at 50 degree. So 2 theta is 180 degree minus 50 degree. So theta is 65 degree. Now from the concept of crystal structure and using the formula for diffraction the Bragg's equation for maxima in diffraction pattern is 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda n we will take the first order that is n equal to 1 d it is the interplanar spacing which is known to us 0 0.091 nanometer for my nickel target that is why we took nickel now we will put these values here and we will get the value of lambda that is lambda is equal to 2 into 0 0.091 we do not need to change nanometer it makes no difference into sine at which specific angle are we observing the difference 65 degree so lambda comes out as 0.165 nanometer. Now, from the concept of de Broglie wavelength of light, lambda is equal to h upon p and if we know the energy value, then the formula for lambda is equal to h upon under root 2mk. Taking, overlooking all the relativistic considerations, the sharp peak is occurring at 54 volt. Hence, kinetic energy is very small compared with rest energy m0 c square of emitted electrons. So you can just simply overlook the relativistic considerations and find the value of lambda for uh, 54 electron volt so lambda is equal to 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power of minus 34 upon under root 2 into rest mass 9 point uh, sorry mass in 10 to the power of minus 31 into 54 this converted into 1 electron volt is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 joule. This lambda also comes out as 0.166 nanometer. Hence both lambdas through crystal structure concept where we took the azimuthal angle through potential where we took the concept of kinetic energy overlooking the relativistic considerations are coming out same. So the davison germer experiment we find that is an excellent agreement with matter wave formula and they completely confirm the existence of matter waves. Thank you.